I'm going to bet that if you went to primary school in Australia, among the Scaldis, Maccas, DJs and Davos, someone wore the nickname Pocket Pocket with pride. Small in stature maybe, but the rocket of the playground made up for it with speed, agility and that legendary epic run that downfall that went the whole of recess. So I'm told. Bottom line, being athletically capable has nothing to do with physical size. So with a footprint of just 7.6 square meters, and supercar-like -like performance numbers on the brochure, the 2017 body TVRs could very well bring the Pocket Rocket name back to the yard. This is the second generation cars variant of the, the TT, and, for the first time, will be sold locally as both a coupe and roadster. The drop top is a two-seater to the coupe's 2 plus 2 layout and packs a 90 kg weight penalty 1,440 kg coupe to 1,530 kg roadster thanks to the powered top and extra bracing. Mechanically though, the two are identical. Both powered by the new inline 5-cylinder 2.5-liter turbocharged petrol engine we first saw in the RS3 hatch and shortly, the RS3 sedan. It's a cracking melt, offering 294 kilowatts and 480 Nm of torque, which runs to all four wheels via a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox. For reference. The previous generation Audi TDRs Plus offered 265 kilowatts and 465 Nm, so the stats on the new car hold up well. Body say the coupe is good for a 3.7 second run to 100 km slash h the roadster is just 2 tenths slower. That's no typo either. 3.7 seconds that makes it the fastest production car under $190,000. Not a bad trophy for the mantle. It wasn't that long ago we saw million-dollar hypercars chasing a sub for second 0 100 km slash h sprint time. For it to come in the accessible package of an Audi TD is an impressive feat. No wonder they call it a compact supercar. It looks the part. 2, with sharp angles and aggressive vents. The fixed rear wing replaces the electrically operated item and helps balance the now iconic TV shape. You can delete the spoiler at no cost if it's not your thing, though. That low turret and rounded ends work well in the third generation TT, further cementing this car as a style leader. To help. There are a choice of three different 20-inch wheel options all at no cost and a paint colors to choose from. You can accent the exterior in black or south aluminium to further stand out from the crowd. The optional matrix lighting package $3,000 replaces the standard adaptive LED headlamps with Audi's intelligent LED technology and adds the very showy extra of stripping indicators and OLED tail lamps which adamant on startup. Do you need this? No, but it is very cool. Inside, the driver-centric dashboard is very minimalistic, with the cool air vents and their center inlay buttons a particular standout. It's modern and smart, but almost a little too clean to carry any character. You can option in some extended leather $450 or carbon fiber $1750 but even with these, the dash top itself remains a soft touch plastic component, and as such, you never get the feeling that the TD tips toward a luxury skew. That said, the seats are very comfortable and offer good bolstering and support. The power adjustment buttons did feel a little light and flimsy, though, and the switch that cuddles you tighter with adjustable bolsters was a little counterintuitive. But, everything works, and once you've set yourself up, the cabin is a cozy place to spend time. There was very little feeling of difference between the hard and soft top options too. I will say, that in terms of passenger space in the coupe, 
the back seats are pointless. When I last drove the regular TT, my 8-year-old daughter had to sit side saddle to fit, so forget about adults. What they do offer, though, aside from being a handy place to put things, is an expanding boot that jumps from 305 to 712 liters when the seats are folded. That's plenty of room for golf bags, or overnight luggage, or even both. The hatch is quite heavy to lift, though, so keep this in mind when juggling heavy shopping bags. Even the Roadster isn't impractical. With a 280-liter boot the Boxster gets 275 liters from its combined front and rear storage but that's basically it. As far as storage goes, making the coupe the activity choice. It's not cheap. The coupe starts at $137,900 before options and on-road costs the Roadster $1,000 more. That puts the diminutive Audi squarely into Porsche Boxster from $118,400 and Cayman from $115,600 territory. You do get plenty of equipment, including blind spot detection, plane keep assistance, Napa leather seats, parking sensors at both ends, and a range of personalization options but there are still a number of upgrade boxes to tick that can see the price of entry rise to over dollars 150 grand. Sure it can outpace the car twice that price, but it still feels expensive, or more to the point, makes those midship Porsches seem affordable, despite the gap in standard equipment and oomph both to the Audi's favor. Our launch drive program took in some cheering roads around Melbourne as well as a few hot laps around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit, so we able to better understand the TDRs throughout a range of conditions. The result? A bit of a mixed bag. As of starting point, the arts is very easy to drive. The virtual cockpit display, with three distinct modes traditional dials, an almost full screen navigation mech, and an R's performance setting becomes second nature to use very quickly. Everything, from firing up the engine to changing drive modes, can be done from the steering wheel. You don't need to think beyond your personal space as a driver, which makes the little TV a very focused machine. At Turing speeds, the TT rides exceptionally well. Magnetic ride adjustable suspension dampers are standard, and in almost the rare circumstance, comfort is comfortable and dynamic noticeably more dynamic. Who would have thought? We even hit the railway crossing, a fine mixture of sharp edges, undulating tarmac and elevation changes, and the little body just soaked it up. It feels light, nimble and confident, but not all that exciting. Sure, we're rolling past fields in 80 kilometers slash H sign busted areas, but with all those impressive numbers on the brochure, I was expecting a bit more engagement. You accelerate to overtake easily, and power delivery is smooth and forthcoming, but there's no shove in the chest as the car pulls away. There's nothing wrong with this, everything is working away well enough. It's just that here, on the open road, the regular TV would feel just as entertaining, and save you a bundle in the process. No, to really understand the TVRs, you need to up the pace, and I have to say, that from a pleasant but largely by the numbers drive to the track, the little Audi transforms when you are on it. As of start. There is the noise a five-cylinder makes all the way to its 7,000 RPM breadline. It is without a word of a lie, glorious. It sounds similar to the original Lamborghini Gallardo V10, a trait of the 12543 firing order. The Ars offers a sonorous owl, that's musical and angry at the same time throw in pops and cracks as you shift down the gears while breaking into a corner, and the TVRs is nothing like the car it was on the highway. You build speed quickly, and hold it easily, 
the AWD system and traction control programs dialing in just the right amount of heart rate increases as the Audi dances about the circuit. You can feel it walking ever so slightly beneath you, especially through fast turns, but there is a sensation of confidence there, hinting that although it feels close, the car is well within its safety envelope. The standard brakes 370 mm front, 310 mm rear do a good job at washing off speed but did start to feel the heat after a few hard working laps. Top speed is limited to 250 km slash h, but even approaching this we clocked just over 240 km slash h on the front straight there is no hinting that the car is running out of legs. Even Audi suggest there is plenty more in it, should one of these be fully released from its electronic leash. It's fast and fun, like this and feels very different to the car we met earlier in the day. As you see, the 2017 body TTRs is very much a technical car as opposed to an emotional one. Are you a precise and details-oriented person? Take a day out of life, place of the Sparco boots and head to a track day. At the limit, when given the chance to really stretch its legs, the TDRs will reel in much more expensive and exotic machinery. Option of the carbon ceramic front brakes $8,900 and your mini Lambo exhaust will wail like a banshee for lap after lap, offering plenty of thrills and forgiveness as you perfect your craft. It will tour effortlessly on the way home, too. A yoga cool down to follow your high intensity left mills take no workout. And that's good, if that's for you. For buyers who are after a bit more character and personality all the time, and for whom a track day is a rarity rather than a routine, then the TDRs might just not hit the right notes off and enough. Maybe a less powerful but more emotive Boxster would be a better option, or even something a little lower down the TV line, if you like the general audio approach. Don't let this take anything away from the arts though. In the right hands it is a proper pocket pocket, technically advanced, and brilliantly effective. You just need to know whether those hands are yours or not.